Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're diving back into some more Create Above and Beyond. So we are back, of course, in our Create Above and Beyond world, and I am sitting here in front of my old school millstone, uh, just collecting some iron. And I have good reason to be collecting this iron. So recently, we've uh, we've kind of had, in, you know, we had to go manually mining for a lot of things, and well, we're gonna need a lot of copper and zinc real soon. So I've gone ahead and I've thrown a, uh, a half stack of iron in here to get ourselves some iron dust. Um, we are gonna be focusing on trading stations uh, right at the start, because I think using some of those coins to buy ingots is going to be way better than me going mining, because I can tell you the mining is quite frustrating when it comes to mining for specifically things like uh, copper. Um, copper requires you to be above wild level 40, and I've kind of run out of caves underground, or at least it seems that way, without going way out. Um, so I think I've gav gathered about as much copper as I possibly can in my area, so I'm going to have to start finding other ways, and luckily the trading station is that other way. So right here, all I have to do is make myself two trading stations, one for zinc and one for copper, and we have ourselves brass. Um, which is great because we're going to need way more brass than we currently have at the moment. Uh, that old brass maker that we made a while back ago that's up here, like, it's really going to show up now and uh, be super helpful for us. Um, so, all I have to do is grab this and we, go, we can go ahead and buy this once I have the coin on me. And we can start working on some trades. Now, the reason I am currently collecting iron is because... We actually have power cables that are the pipes mod, but are cleverly decorated to look like Invar cables. I didn't even know the pipes mod was in here because it was so cleverly hidden. Uh, apparently, we can use the pretty pipes wrench on it, which is actually perfect. Um, and it says right here, they're marked as inputs by sneak right clicking the connected with the wrench. So yeah, we can make this, but it requires Invar. So Invar is uh, kind of interesting in itself. Uh, we need uncompressed or uh, unprocessed Invar. To get that, we can uh, blast or uh, we can go ahead and throw this inside of our bulk blasting um, nickel compound. So we need nickel and iron dust to make this. So let's grab some nickel and request a little bit of it and uh, go ahead and throw this in here. Um, how much are we actually going to need for this? We need two to get eight. That is plenty. Plenty for right now. So there's one. And I did. I should have requested. There we go. That should re hopefully request one piece of nickel. Maybe I have to just request it myself. <laughs> Sometimes this crafting thing can be a little weird. All right. So we'll pull all this stuff out. We'll clear it. Perfect. Okay. We'll save that for later. Because this has to be smelted. I don't know if this is going to uh, to work super quick in this. It it should turn into the unprocessed part. If not, we will throw it. Oh, there it goes. So perfect. And then I believe we can just toss it into this. And just uh, let it stamp 16 times. This thing has to stamp this bad boy. 16 times before it moves on on, on the belt line. I, I really need to get a speed controller on here, but I mean, this is as fast as I think this uh, the system will allow it to go because it is just a water wheel. So the reason I wanted this invar is because it does create ourselves those fluid or flux ducts, which are going to allow us to be able to transfer power. Oh, uh, because I was wondering because they were kind of hidden. I was like, man, how am I going to transfer power from like this? Do I just, am I always going to need like multiple dynamos? But no, 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 I'm good. So all I have to do here is break this. Be very careful because these pipes can actually spew all this uh, lava all over the place, which is not good. But that should start receiving some lava, hopefully. Uh hopefully there's lava question 
Does it not receive it off of an angle like that? That is kind of interesting if it doesn't. Oh, there it goes. It just just taking a little bit of time. Okay, that's perfectly fine. All right. So with that, I can now get power there and I should be able to start sharing power elsewhere, which is going to be fantastic. The fact that, that even gets power there. Okay. Where exactly do I want to put the, actually, I don't even know if this is going to, this is going to be exactly where I want this. Uh, unfortunately, there's, I wish there was a way for this to auto input and output. That would be, that would just make things so much easier if that was the case. Instead, I had to set up some weird contraption here to get this in fast enough. So. We, if I leave it like this, we're looking at uh, some potential problems with uh, the ground being covered, but eh, I guess it's not that big of a deal because I can route, can route the power. Actually, let's just route the power here for right now. That way I can put, I can have two machines. I can have two trading stations set up. Um... I can have one here and one here. And since they're hooked to the same network, the outputs will all end up here. I, wow, I think that that'll actually work out fine. A <laughs> little bit of thought. All right. Uh, it's not the, uh, the best solution in the world, but it'll get the job done. So I have all of this coin hanging around. So that's where I'm going to go ahead and buy this and buy the one for copper. And uh, now all I got to do is say, hey, this is the copper one. This is the zinc one, and I can take a stack each, toss the stack in there and in there, and we have ourselves <laughs> some copper. Oh my gosh, this is so much easier. Oh, we have copper and zinc. You can't, you can't beat that. That is fantastic. Will the zinc get transferred? I think it will once these are done. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then we can just take this and head on over to our brass factory. And just like that, we're casting out our brass ingots. Oh, things are gonna get, things are getting a little bit smoother and I'm liking this. So now that we have the ability to basically request copper and stuff at will, really we can request any material at will. Ah, oh, this, this is no no more mining. And then it was kind of one of the more painful things I had to do. Now, I know you guys are going to yell at me and say, Chosen, why didn't you just, why, why didn't you just brass? You know what? I just, I didn't even see that here. I'm not going to lie. I didn't see it. I just, yeah, but we, we could just skip the whole thing and just, yeah, it costs 48 though. It costs 48 silver where this is uh 16 silver. So, I mean, really, this is a better, no, actually it's, yeah, it's a better deal. This is a better deal to do it this way. So with all that said and done, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at what we have so far and where we're actually at, because we've now finished stage two and we're about to go in stage three. So things are going to start getting a lot harder and, uh, well, we need to make sure that everything is floating and everything's working well. Now I do have my tree farm off at the moment because we have plenty of wood. Of course, this could also be used in a trading station to uh, to, to basically make more money as well. Um, now, I could go through and make this a little bit neater. Um, and what I've been doing is all of our overflow started going into this chest, but then I switched to going into this big barrel. And then I made actual barrel upgrades. So these now, uh, they do have larger upgrades in them, which I'm gonna continue to do from this point forward. Uh, eventually what I want to do is I want to take, uh, this material. I want to take the granite and uh, eventually turn it into red sand. So that way we can have gold nugget automation. That will eventually be a thing. I'd have to pipe those out. Um, but eventually I want to get these cogs all worked out. I want to get this set on speed controllers and, and all kinds of stuff instead of where it's at. That'll be something that we eventually do. But right now we mainly need to focus on seeing this. So this right here is full. Um, it's doing its job. Anytime we need these, I'm going to go ahead and pull a whole line out. Um, at the moment, I'm manually just throwing them over into here. But yeah, that's, it's probably not the best thing to do, but that, that is what I'm doing. I'm putting these, which are the kinetic machine ones, and they're just getting put over here. So that way they get turned into the kinetic machines too. I also have my screwdrivers up here. So that way, when we run out a new screwdriver, just being put in. So this is pretty crude. It's not 100% fully automated because of the screwdrivers. 
Um, however, it, I believe we were able to buy with five gold a uh, unbreakable screwdriver, and with five gold, eventually we were able to get a uh, unbreakable saw. So that'll be something that we eventually work towards as we have plenty of resources generating as we, as time goes by. This setup has been one that I have been trying my best to get fully automated and, and running and, and making sure everything's maintained. Um, and I did finally figure out the best way to do this. So the mechanical crafter is now pointing up and is going into a drawer so it's not spitting the items out because I was having a mess over here. Um, and instead, now it's going to the drawer and then that gets pulled out with anisite funnel onto a chute so it doesn't get spilled everywhere and then make sure it lands on this belt and ends up back around. So this is now fully up and running. And uh, so long as everything stays nice and, and working, we, we should be good. This sometimes happens, but that's just basically waiting for the line. Um, I don't believe, I don't know if those items would despawn. It'd have to be like five minutes. And so far it's been running and nothing's really had issues. This all seems to be maintaining itself, which is awesome. Like that's, that's what, that's what I want to see is like everything maintaining itself, which it's doing. Um, let's see. I believe the, oh, actually maintaining itself. It was the only thing we don't have is the lava pumping to that. Now we have lava pumping to this, but that actually requires wood, uh, to maintain. So here we go. I'm going to have to grab a whole bunch of wood. I was wondering why it was stopped. Cause it's been running this whole time and been, it's actually been running really, really well. And so when it does stop like this, it causes some problems. This actually starts to double like uh, significantly. And I don't want it to do that. Uh, I'll have to go in and, and purge um, some of these that build up in here. Some of the Certus Quartz, because this will just keep duplicating Certus Quartz over and over and over again. Because really, it costs nothing to do that. It's absolutely free to duplicate this over and over again. So let's have ourselves a look-see at what we need to do next. So we have finished one and two. So now we're working towards three. So um, this is going to be interesting. The Catharsis. I believe I'm saying that right. This is chapter three. Um, all right. So the groundwork has been laid with all that has been created so far. Um, the place should really pick up from here, or the pace should really pick up from here. Uh, producing components for inductive technology relies on very particular techniques. It says, um, though with all the new equipment already, automating even the more convoluted interactions should be become a cakewalk. Um, so after hitting the check mark above the chapter, of course, the factory guide will become okay. So we're going to have access to that. Now that has opened up and we can take a look at <laughs> the, the catharsis. Okay. So where to start? Oh boy. Uh, all the way up here, I guess. Um, chapter three, start working towards a passive supply of, uh, radiant induction coils. All right, this is sure to encounter some new unfamiliar tasks. Once again, it is time to grab the wrench, restock the toolbox and go clear out a new plot. Oh boy. So yeah, we are probably gonna need a lot of room for this. Um, and I'm slowly working on, on all these areas, right? So keeping stock, um, a few of the falling contraptions involve dropping items onto the ground. Process would be back stacked with overflow. It's important to toggle the production after a certain buff buffer threshold. So that's kind of interesting. There's a stockpile switch, so it'll shut your stuff off. You get a redstone. That's a pretty interesting block. Um, 75% stop producing items, which it reads this. But even though we already have sort of like a, a toggle, I've kind of built like a toggle shut off into everything already. So like once the only thing that doesn't shut off is this. So when I was talking about these conveyor belts right here, they'll just keep making more and more. And I guess they would make enough until the uh, the main belt shut off or until the whole chest was full. And then once the chest was full, then this line would back up. I guess it would shut itself off. But it is nice to know that we have this, so we might have to use that. And redstone links are, mwah, they are fantastic. Okay. And then we have an auto hammer, mechanical auto hammer. 
Conductive mechanism in var machinery builds on a tough metal alloy between iron and nickel. Okay, so we just did this. Because um, Invar takes... So yeah, it took 16 hammer presses, by the way. But I've already done that. So I, I already made Invar, and we have the ability to just buy Invar. Okay. So express sticks, and then we have more cobblestone, and then we have more sand. Okay. So sand, what is this? Sand will be required to build the explo uh, the explosives needed for the reactor. Thankfully, new standards have allowed you to access the crushing wheel. Ooh, so that is something we need to make. Um, truly cheap, multi-purpose material for cobblestone uh, is making its comeback. Nice. And right here, for the next trick, a supply of wooden sticks is required, whether that uh, calls for a new harvester or just a schedule shipment from contraption one is up to you. Um, the next wooden stick. So the, I mean, we do have access to wooden sticks, like a new contraption, like this is a thing. Um, a steady supply from one. I love how it mentions that. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, you're making tons of sticks, but you're probably gonna need a better way to do that. Um, but do we really need to automate sticks? We'll find out. Um, I'll go ahead and accept these. Because we are going to work towards those. We just need to have them in our inventory. So we need to make a crushing wheel. Or multiple crushing wheels, actually. Up next, a crushing wheel is not the, uh, only, is not, not only as a machine, but as an ingredient too. Walls. Oh, so we might actually need crushing wheels. Oh my gosh, crushing wheels are required to make singularities. That's interesting. Um, I'm guessing that's the recipe that it was talking about, is crushing wheels are used to make singularities. Kind of makes sense. <laughs> you put a crushing wheel inside of a crushing wheel and uh, well, the universe implodes. Um, so that totally makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and get this done. We need to make some crafters and I believe it's like 20 something of them. So, let's see, wheel, crushing wheel, and then, yeah, oh, 21 mechanical crafters is what we actually need for this. And we should be able to just hook this onto something nearby. Um, but we are going to need a, a new area, I think, to start working on these projects. So, I was, I was thinking about this. I don't have my goggles yet, but I believe that this is going to be able to increase some stress levels here. Now, I know we have access, I believe, to our... Actual, let's see, create flywheel, like the flywheel. Yeah, we can start to actually make this stuff now. And we do have access to the furnace engine. So that would be the best way to do this. And then also set up some way to, to fully automate that furnace. So that way it's it's uh, always generating power. But for right now, these windmills still, I can't beat them. They're, for the price, like since I have sheep, so many sheep, and, and the, it just basically costs absolutely nothing. I believe I hook two of them together like this, and then we can hook that speed controller up to it. And I think it's gonna look, it's gonna work a lot better. Um, so I, I do have three powering all of this machinery, and we have some crazy stuff going on here. So hopefully two will at least be able to benefit and then set up in this form factor. I think these are going to work really well. And uh, this is uh, starting a little bit cleaner here. So, and just like that, I have it all set up here. Now, this thing is massive, as you can see. Um, and of course, I can go back here and increase the speed all the way up until this thing starts to say it is stressed out. Now, what I do need is cobblestone. I need quite a bit of cobblestone. And uh, then I'm also going to need sticks. And we're going to line this thing up. Now, what I also could do, I think on the back, I don't know 100%, but this mechanical arm if it was fed the proper items, could potentially feed this entire thing, I think. It, it would take uh, some storage drawers hooked to the back of this, I believe, and some other things, but it could potentially work. <laughs> uh, it'd be pretty hard to set up everything, but I think funnels allows that to actually happen. But anyways, um, for right now, we need to get all of this uh, kind of lined up. So I need to basically point all of these to where I want this to inevitably go. And 
Let's just go ahead and set this to uh, to end up right here. Well, actually, I can't open this chest if it's here. Let's have it end up right there into into this chest because we could have it pop onto the ground or we can have it go into a chest. Um, but if we go into a chest, we need to make sure these are all lined up so that way they when they end, for example, uh, they end up over here. So this needs to go up, up. These need to go over until they're all facing into this. Just basically like that. <laughs> Actually, I think that is, uh, that'll work. So really to get this to work, all I need to do is line these all up like this. And I believe it's just sticks. Is that right? Oh, stick on, stick on the middle too. And there we go. So it's all going to combine up. And of course, like if I want to make this go faster, let's just speed this up. 32 is probably going to be incredibly fast. And then bam, we have two crushing wheels just like that in there. Fantastic. Wonder if this process really needs to be fully automated or not. So I now have some crushing wheels and I have a setup here that is going to definitely work. Uh, but the real thing is we need to really automate it. it. It is going to need to be automated, which means I kind of understand now. This is saying contraption 19, contraption 20-1, 23. Um, all of these are going to be their part of a, their own contraption. So we need a separate setup that is going to be for sticks. And if I turn this on, I think I should be converting this here. I need to turn this back on and get this thing set up in a much better way. I think at this point we have the ability to automate this and make this much neater and uh, definitely like we could we could definitely set this up so that way we're piping the items out of the chest and getting them into um, storage drawers. They, they, they have to go into something like that and it's going to make this a lot more efficient and I can leave this running now. So one thing that's going to super help me out with this is a drawer controller. Ah, this is going to make things so much easier. I'm going to go ahead and basically separate this and I'm going to raise this up higher and we're just going to have a chute that basically goes straight into a drawer controller and fills these things up. That's that's going to be how it's done. I've got to set this up and this is going to be so much easier to maintain. So I ended up getting several things done off camera. I switched this to a water wheel to make it a bit faster um, at clearing out all of the stuff that it needs to, as you can see. It's a, it's a bit faster now and uh this was what was the hardest part i made a bunch of brass pipes and honestly uh these are going to be a thing of the future yeah for sure um inside this brass pipe is a low extraction module and all i think i need now is the cobblestone generator um that i i should be able to make with a zinc machine um what was the cobblestone generator or the igneous extruder it needed a piston so let's make a piston. Do we have it? Perfect. And this right here should get us a nice igneous extruder. And of course, um, we do need an upgrade. Um, and I believe this right here also gives us an upgrade. Do we need, is it just redstone? I think it's just redstone, one piece. With a uh, zinc machine and that will get us, yeah, an upgrade for our igneous extruder. To make sure we have enough cobblestone. No longer are the days of this. We don't uh, we don't need that over here. We can actually use our own. Now this is where um, things are getting a little bit interesting with the pipes. I don't know if I can use the pipes to specifically place things in here the way I want them to be placed. Now, oh, so this is this is what I thought might happen. So I don't have a great way. And I don't think this will connect, no. Huh, so here's the thing. So at least I have the sticks making their way over here, whether they're breaking through or not. They're still making their way to this. And it seems like this was the main inventory that it was trying to connect to, or was it multiple? So it looks like it was connected to multiple like this was how I had it set up because I thought that it might go into here. Does it need to connect like this? Be able to get them in there properly? 
because it's not actually going directly in here. Okay, so with that, um, this actually might be where I, I set up the, uh, the thing that I was talking about before. So we might actually get to use this thing. This mechanical arm might actually be able to get this job done uh, with these things right here. So all I need to do, I guess, is place a chest here instead. And we're going to have to set up some filters. Um, this should hopefully connect to this. I think what I need to do is actually connect the pipe to the uh, the machine, to the chest. Weird. It, okay. <laughs> These pipes can be kind of iffy. Okay. I almost wonder if I pull the uh, the other one out of the machine, if it'll fix that. So I'm thinking this should work. So we have all of these andesite funnels facing inwards and they have a filter on them. So this should be able to specify that they get input into this. And uh, that should work. Let me go ahead and pull these out here. Now I have to specify the chest. So this is a little cool thing that you can do with this. We're gonna get this all set up. Let me actually get some andesite casing. I'm just going to set it on here. I think I can place it on this block. We'll find out. So I need to click on here. Shift click, I believe. Or just click. Maybe. It should. So this is a deposit. That's a deposit. All of these need to be set to deposits. Just like that. And then this is an input or does it need specifically depots oh boy so it may not be the prettiest thing in the world but i think i'm getting it i kind of arrange things a little bit differently so that way my mechanical arm can work um but we just basically set this as two different depots and then we set all of these as a place that the stuff can go and we should be able to place it down. And this is mechanical arm has two inputs and 21 outputs. <laughs> Organize Zotron. Oh boy. And now we need to basically get this uh, gearing over here. Um, so to do that, let's see, I need a couple of cogs. Uh, we might be able to take this cog. I was, oh no, actually, no, we can't do that. Let's use uh, the smaller cogs. And you could, uh, we can't use a belt either. Yeah, cog should work. You guys are getting to <laughs> like literally see my mind working here. So a cog going this way, and we should be able to get that power to transfer literally from changing uh, by placing down a couple of gearboxes. One being this gearbox, and another one being a vertical gearbox. Like that, and there we go. So this should slowly but surely get it done. It's not going to be crazy fast or anything, but it is going to work. And it will take its turn. Interesting. How cool is that? And as you can see from the front, it'll do its thing. Now, the only thing we can do here is, of course... Speed this up till it's overstressed. It's overstressed. Still overstressed. It's not overstressed there. Is it overstressed here? So at 96, it's overstressed. So I just need to turn it down to 80. And this machine is running off these two windmills. And watch as it does its magic. Boom. And there we go, it went to the chest. So this right here is now automatic. That's pretty cool. Well guys, with this, I of course hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, I do wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video and that is gonna be a huge thanks to Pastehead. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on Discord, becoming a Discord premium member. Absolute boss. Thank you so much 
for your amazing support. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, be sure to do so. It's discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And of course, we do have a vanilla sub or not a, not a sub server, a vanilla public server that I would love for you guys to join. It's absolutely kicking now. Oh my gosh, we're having so much fun over there. And I hope you guys are, uh, are gonna pop over there and enjoy it as well. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Of course, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.